everybody, it's Heather from Sister Wigs, and I want to have a deep, meaningful discussion with you guys, and I'm kicking it off with this video. Um, so before I actually get into the nitty gritty of this, I would like to read something I found on Reddit. This is from the Life Pro Tips subreddit, and the commenter's name, the original posters, her name is uh, Mandarina11, and she says, Life Pro Tip. Toxic positivity is totally a thing. Don't let the good vibes only people invalidate your feelings and life experiences. And there's more. Don't feel like you can't even mention the negative aspects of your life for fear of upsetting someone. You lost your job. Your grandma died. You're depressed and your job search is impacting your social life. It's perfectly normal and you should be able to discuss those negative parts of your life with people close to you. Don't ever let someone invalidate your feelings and experiences just because they don't fit into their fairy tale idea of positivity. Talking about your grief can help you find support and empathy to overcome it. Talking about being unemployed and your job search can help you find a job. Talking about your problems is the way to find solutions and support. We all need a little help from our friends at times. Shutting down and isolating yourself can be the easiest way. But people who care about you would want to listen and help. So I want to give full credit to Mandarina because that's beautifully stated. And that is what this discussion is going to be about. So let's get into it. We're going through a pandemic. We're going through a lot of changes in our society. There's a lot of unknown stuff out there right now. And it's difficult to know who to trust or what to feel. And that means that everyone's going to have an opinion, not just on all of these things, but also about how you handle it. And I would like to argue that how you decide to handle how you deal with all of these life changes and society changes and whatnot, that's a very personal thing. And no one has the right to tell you how you should and shouldn't feel about that. That includes good vibes only people who refuse to let you talk about your fear. Your fear is valid. Hear, hear me out on this. Your fear is valid. Your frustrations are valid. Your concerns, your struggle, all of that is valid. Now here's what I'm not going to advocate. I am not going to advocate for one-sided situations where somebody who feels like they're in a lot of pain uses that pain as a weapon to then pay that pain forward to other people. Ever heard the old saying, hurt people hurt people? I have a saying, beware the unloved because they will eventually hurt themselves or me. <laughs> I think that that is really unfair to people who are in pain. I don't like the saying at all, but I do understand how it came into being. I think that these two issues, so, keeping it real, or demanding positive slanted fakeness from everybody around you, um, I think that they're both flip sides of the same dysfunctional coin. And both are the end result of what happens when people cannot handle their own emotions, let alone the emotions of the people around them. People who are aggressive bullying types who hide under the guise of keeping it real, they're easy to spot to the point of being like caricatures of what real humans are supposed to be like and what real human interactions are supposed to be like. They're just very aggressive and it's, it's easy to see. What's much harder to see is that these Pollyanna types who peddle in toxic positivity are also bullies. They're just much more passive aggressive about it. And that's when this becomes dysfunctional. Because my whole argument is it's just as dysfunctional as people who are really nasty to each other and are claiming that they're being honest by doing that. This is people doing the exact same thing, except they're hiding behind pixie dust. They're hiding behind positivity and tropes that revolve around positivity to shield themselves from reproach. So you can't criticize them for being mean to you. In this regard, toxic positivity corrodes social bonds because it leads to a fragile, avoidant, disconnected, hurt people, hurt people mentality that can lead to insecure and inauthentic connections with others. Remember, you can't have real relationships with fake people. And that's especially true 
if those people are trying to sell you something, whether it's a product, service, or just their own popularity. Because, I mean, I think it's equally gross when a person or a brand, you know, says, tell me all of your deepest, darkest secrets, and then you confide in them and say things aren't going well, and then they're like, oh, that sucks. Here's a coupon. <laughs> here's Here, buy this thing. It'll do the trick. It'll make you feel like a million bucks. Oh, it didn't work. Here's another one that might work better. Oh, something broke on it. Well, here, buy this dongle. Like... Whew. There, there, there is a lot of this stuff going around in our culture right now, as you can probably tell. We may live in a social media era where marketers, advertisers, and the platforms themselves like to tell us that our opinions and what we buy are the most important things about us. But I would argue our experiences, both good and bad, do more to tell the world about who we are as people than any of that other stuff. There is more to life than being a victim. And there's more to life than being a victor. There's a whole journey in between here and there. And it's constantly in flux. And that journey is valid. That journey requires people to talk about it. And I think that that is something that is hard to distill into clickbaity titles. It's very difficult to talk about in a very short movie. I think that positivity in general can be a useful tool to help you get kind of that to that middle neutral headspace. The one where you're not reacting out of fear or aggression or the one where you're just covering up everything with sunshine. That nice neutral headspace where you can make calm, rational decisions and use critical thinking skills to get you where you want to go. I'm in my closet because I was putting um, laundry away, but I had this thought and I was like, why, why do I feel this urgent need to make this video? Why do I need to talk to you guys about this? we are a vulnerable population. Like we are experiencing trauma and grief and loss and illness and a lot of pretty heavy stuff sometimes. I mean, not all of us. Some of us are just like fashion wearers. So we're going to put those folks aside for a moment because I'm talking specifically to medical wearers for this particular point. And then everybody else can join us for the rest of this video. But the thing is like, as someone with health issues, or somebody who's going through something traumatic, you are vulnerable to predators who want to take advantage of your emotions to make money from it. And uh, wigs in general, historically have been a product that is sold in this way. It's part of the reason why I got into this industry was to help you guys fight this and navigate around it. So I know that you guys are vulnerable to this. I also know that there is a lot of this toxic positivity right now in our space. And it has historically been with us forever. Because as Don Draper said so beautifully in Mad Men. Advertising is based on one thing. Happiness. And you know, advertising is based on one thing. Happiness. And you know what happiness is? Happiness it's the smell of a new car. It's freedom from fear. It's a billboard on the side of the road that screams with reassurance that whatever you're doing, it's okay. You are okay. You don't need me or anybody else to empower you. I hate that kind of marketing. You don't need people like me to make you happy. You don't need people like me to empower you. You don't need a brand, you don't need a product, you don't need hair to empower you. If you hear nothing else in this video, please hear this passionately that I'm trying to deliver as passionately as possible without scaring you away. <laughs> like. You don't need that stuff. It's like one of those cheesy Disney movies where the power is in you all along. Like Disney got something right. Ding, ding, ding. It is. It's in you all along. And you don't need me to sprinkle a bunch of fairy dust on you. I want to show people that things can be a little bit different, which is why I'm encouraging you. And I want to encourage you throughout this video to comment. Comments on anything in this video, including if you have experienced toxic positivity, because that is, is what this is at its core. I want to show people that it is a problem, and it's a really big problem among women in particular, and the way things are marketed to women. And 
I would also like to challenge you in the comments to offer up an alternative. How could that person have phrased whatever that toxic positive thing was in a way where it would have helped you, been constructive, helped your healing process, help you move on with your life? Thepsychologygroup.com. What is toxic positivity? We define toxic positivity as the excessive and ineffective overgeneralization of a happy, optimistic state across all situations. Ooh. So fake niceness, fake sunshine dust. I feel this. The process of toxic positivity results in the denial, minimization, and invalidation of the authentic human emotional experience. I am listening. Okay. Just like anything done in excess, when positivity is used to cover up or silence the human experience, it becomes toxic. Ding, ding, ding. These people, we're on the same page here. By disallowing the existence of certain feelings, we fall into a state of denial and repressed emotions. The truth is humans are flawed. We get jealous, angry, resentful, and greedy. Sometimes life can just flat out suck. By pretending that we are positive vibes all day, we deny the validity of a genuine human experience. So what are some signs of toxic positivity according to this source? Because so far, me and this source, we are, we're vibing hard. Uh, signs of toxic positivity. Um, hiding, masking your true feelings. So being fake. That's pretty easy to summarize. Trying to just get on with it by stuffing, dismissing emotions. Everything worthwhile in life is won through surmounting the associated negative experience. Any attempt to escape the negative to avoid it or quash it or silence it only backfires. The avoidance of suffering is a form of suffering. The avoidance of struggle is a struggle. The denial of failure is a failure. Hiding what is shameful is itself a form of shame. It's one of those things where if something is really harming you and your life, like let's say a past traumatic event, you don't have to relive that event over and over again. I have post-traumatic stress disorder. I was diagnosed in 2002 and it was due to a lot of um, abuse that I experienced as a child that sort of continued for a while and, and I was homeless and stuff until I was able to, you know, figure some stuff out, lift up out of that situation and make a life for myself. Like that is the story of Heather from sisterwigs.com. I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth and I've experienced a lot of trauma. So I understand if you have issues with trauma, why you can't see the middle ground between reliving that over and over again and ignoring it completely. But I can tell you that maybe not for all things and maybe not all the time, like this isn't like a switch, you know, when, where, you know, the way you deal with trauma is either on or off. It's more like a dimmer switch, right? Some days it's gonna be bright, red hot, real hot, you, you, you don't want to mess with it. And other days it's going to be all the way off, right? But most of the time it's going to be somewhere in between. But it takes a long time to get to that point. And you never get there if you repress that out of fear. Because then that fear dictates everything. Fear can be very addictive. It can be very compelling. It is hardwired into us to not want to deal with it. And dealing with it again is not on off. It's not a switch. It's one of these things that requires nuance and constant exercise and monitoring. And you can get to a point where you can make peace with it most of the time. And that to me is what it means to heal from this. It's not that it never happened, that it wasn't as meaningful. It never, that never happens as far as I know. And one of the most healing things that you can experience if you've experienced trauma is just Somebody listening, somebody caring. Time, like not just wasted time that passes from the traumatic event until some yet to be determined point in the future, but quality time spent with another person bonding. And it's hard. It's really, really hard because it requires a lot of both parties and the person who listens has to have the emotional integrity on their end to listen to it and to empathize 
but not go into that dark space with you. Because if they go in, it's like poltergeist, you know, where they're trying to bring Carol Ann back from the other side with the spooky people. Like, if they fall into that black hole too, they're also gone. But if they can maintain grip of the rope and bring that other person through the other side with them, they'll both learn how to be okay once they get all the goop off of them. This is a very strange analogy. <laughs> if you just try to get on with it by stuffing it down, you never get there. Other signs of toxic positivity. Feeling guilty for feeling what you feel. This is one I struggle with still, constantly. Is that um, a lot of people who have toxic positivity impulses. So I'm talking about like when I'm on the receiving end of this nonsense. What they like to do is they basically imply that if they do something bad to you and you feel bad about it, you're going to hurt that person by ruining their vibe by explaining that they're hurting you or taking something from you. And that's not their responsibility for being the aggressor or the manipulator. It's your fault for reacting. That's pretty twisted. So I would say right along those lines, you could add gaslighting because that's essentially gaslighting. When a person or a whole group of people try to make somebody who's an outlier of that group feel like their perception of reality is somehow wrong, right? That could go along with this because you know, if you didn't do anything wrong, and yet you still feel guilt, why is that? The answer could be just as simple as you feel guilt because somebody is working very hard to make sure that you feel that way. So you don't stand up for yourself. You don't call attention to their bad behavior. And you just sit there and shut up. <laughs> like that is that that could be the reason, unfortunately. And sometimes it's hard to catch on. So I know this myself too. Like I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And then I, I learn that sometimes people just take that benefit and they just keep, keep benefiting from it. <laughs> Minimizing other people's experiences with feel good quotes or statements. So if somebody is having a really hard time, how would you feel if you just said something really, really, really sad? Like, you know, your husband just died and people were like, it'll be okay. I mean, the point is, once you decide that you're going to be supportive of other people and it's genuine and you really want to do it in a healthy, constructive fashion, there's, there's a lot that you're going to have to manage. And a lot of that comes from the fact that being around somebody who's in distress and pain and grieving, it's awkward, particularly if it's not a shared experience. It can make you very uncomfortable to be around somebody who is actively grieving. And you, if you put yourself in that situation where you want to help support somebody else, you have to, to handle those emotions. And again, that doesn't mean suppressing that. It means reconciling it. It means figuring out what you're going to do with how you feel. So, and knowing it in advance as part of the responsibility of supporting that other person. So that way you can devote your attention to that other person knowing that you're going to be okay. So you can be okay for that person too. And people who are naturally very empathetic, they do this and it's like magic. You're like, how did you do that so effortlessly? But the rest of us, we have to work at it. And the point is the person who's grieving should be able to express that grief however they need to. Even if that means leaving them alone for a little while. The key is don't judge them. Just like you wouldn't want them to judge you. Don't judge them and let them know that you're not judging them. Seriously, it makes a huge difference. If you don't know what to say, say that. Say that you are there, that you've shown up for them, that you love them and that you're not judging them and whatever they need, you're there for it. Game changer. Game changer. Do not give people empty platitudes in response to their grief. Don't tell them to look on the sunny side of life. Don't tell them things could always be worse. Because that's exactly what they're, they're afraid of. They're afraid that things are going to get worse. Other signs of toxic positivity. Trying to give someone perspective instead of validating their emotional experience. So saying something like, it could be worse. I mean, I have said these things to myself. So these are things you could also be doing to yourself. Number six, shaming or chastising others for expressing frustration or anything other than positivity is manipulative. It is about control and it is not the person who is expressing their emotions 
that is taking control in that situation. It is the people who passive aggressively shame that person for expressing human emotions. So shame is a big reason why toxic positivity is bad for our health. To force a positive outlook on pain is to encourage a person to keep silent about their struggles. Most of us don't want to be seen as a drag or bad. So when the choice is between be brave and honest or pretend like everything is going great, we might be tempted to adopt the latter. Brene Brown teaches in several of her books, presentations, and interviews and highly recommend her. Highly recommend her. She's amazing. Um, <laughs> so if you've never heard that name before, check her out, Brene Brown. Um, she says in presentations and interviews that the energy source of shame is silence, secrecy, and judgment. Oh, yes. So much correctness. Yes. Ah. Um, in other words, where there is hiding secrets and denial, shame is usually in the driver's seat. In denying our truth, we begin to live inauthentically with ourselves and with the world. Now, I know that that sounds like a cliche, it sounds like something that should be put on a bumper sticker, like live, laugh, love or something like that. But if you think about it, it's kind of a deep thing because when we disconnect from our own feelings, it forces us to kind of disconnect from the others around us. It's pretty deep, right? And so this could be very complicating. We lose connection with ourselves, making it difficult for others to connect and relate to us. We may look unbreakable from the outside, but on the inside, we're just scared little teddy bears longing for a hug. I like these writers and their style. Have you ever been around a sweet, sugary, just think happy thoughts, Pollyanna kind of person? How comfortable are you with spilling your guts about the deep emotions you're feeling with one of these Pollyanna types? Even though that person might have the best intentions in the world, the message they are mindlessly sending is only good feelings are allowed in my presence. Therefore, it makes you basically have to be fake around them. It forces you to be fake. You can't actually have a genuine connection with those people because anytime you say that, you know, hey, I'm really struggling right now and I could really use just somebody to talk to, those people don't want anything to do with that. You're just bringing them down. Don't kill my vibe, <laughs> right? <laughs> Therefore, it makes it really difficult to express anything but good vibes around those fake people. Consequently, you end up complying with the implied rules of, I can only be a certain kind of person around you. I can't be myself. The other implication being myself is a loser mopey sad sack compared to you because you're super happy. Why don't I feel that way too? The relationship with yourself is often reflected in the relationships you have with others. If you can't be honest about your own feelings, how will you ever be able to hold a space for someone else expressing real feelings in your presence? By curating a fake emotional world, we attract more fakeness, resulting in counterfeit intimacy and superficial friendships. Tell me you don't see that on social media. I'm going to pause knowingly while I sip this tea. Being a healthy human being involves being conscious of ourselves and how we show up in the world. That sounds just like Brené Brown, so I'm living for it. If you recognize yourself as a transmitter of toxic positivity, it's time to cut it out. You're hurting yourself and the people you care about most by insisting on this monochromatic mindset. Instead of practicing toxic positivity, aim for balance and the acceptance of both good and bad emotions rather than all or nothing thinking. This may just be my opinion, but I don't think that the opposite of kindness is cruelty. I think that the opposite of kindness is apathy. If you don't care at all, that's, that's somehow more painful. The opposite of compassion is also not cruelty. The opposite of compassion is judgment. It's really hard to convince somebody that you have compassion for them while you are simultaneously judging them because they can feel it. They can sense that you're judging them and they are fearful of what you might be thinking. If people show you who they authentically are and you reject them, they remember that. And yes, if you judge them and try to shame them into changing to match your preferences and your opinion of who they should be and how they should look and how they should behave, then they will perceive that as a rejection and they will remember that. So if you want people to think that you are genuinely nice and not just somebody who's fake and goes through the motions, 
then you need to back that up with acceptance because what people need more than just the perception of sunshine, fairy dust, happy sauce is acceptance. They, they need to know that you like them how they are, that you are okay with them as a person, how they are, that they don't need to, you know, tap dance around you for you to want to be around them, that you just want to be around them because you like them. It is the best sensation on the planet. <laughs> it, is, it is a gift you can give to people for free as long as you're willing. Willing to take the chance, willing to spend the time. That it's worthwhile. It's one of the most rewarding things that you can do. But you can't judge people and expect a functional relationship with them after you've judged them. Because unless they already know you or are related to you somehow and are obligated to still be around you, chances are that's just going to make them not like you very much, not want to talk to you openly, honestly, authentically. They won't be willing to show you more of themselves. You'll always get a fake artificial version sanitized for your pleasure if any time they try to tell you who they are and you always tell them it's not enough because that's what that judgment tells them loud and clear you've received enough of it in your life i'm sure wasn't that the message you heard has have there been a lot of examples in your life where people making you feel ashamed about who you were made you change fundamentally who you were. There are plenty of people who are abused into compliance, but they're resentful of it all the way. So it's very difficult to make an argument that you could make functional, healthy, happy relationships with a lot of bonding and a lot of genuine positivity instead of just the artifice of it in a situation where someone's hyper judgmental or perhaps both people are. Like if either one of them is, it kind of, it kind of destroys the flow of the genuine, real positivity that they could be experiencing. So they have no choice but to fake it. And, and the thing is, if that judgment that I was just talking about gets removed from the equation where people learn, I mean, it's a learned skill to stop going, oh, that hair, oh, that color doesn't work for her. Oh, she's got a zit right under her eye. What was she thinking? Like it would be a complete and utter overcorrection to go from something that hyper negative to then going to like, everything's awesome all the time, no negativity allowed, good vibes only. Because basically that, that shifts it from being like, everything you do is wrong and it's wrong because I say so and because you don't follow these things that I think you should be doing. That's what judgment usually means is like, I know better than you. You should do what I do. I don't have complete control over my own life. So I'm going to try to exert control over yours instead. Cool. I think we all know that game. But it's a complete overcorrection that awfully, that sounds awfully similar when you're like, Good vibes only. You can't say anything negative in my presence. You can't tell me anything that makes you unhappy in my presence because I'm going to be utterly dismissive of it and counter it with a bunch of like YOLO memes. And I'm going to do that because that is my version of how you should be too. I don't have control over my own life. So I'm going to try to exert control over yours. And the way I think you should live it is to pretend everything is awesome all the time. And if you deviate from that in my presence for a second, I'm going to judge you as a failure or as a negative, nasty person, somebody who uh, clearly does not have their stuff together. Because anytime somebody shows a sign of human struggle or weakness, there, there's gotta be somebody out there that's going to think they're a failure for it. And those people are wrong <laughs> because to fail is human and to struggle is human. There are probably no more human emotions than to experience that kind of loss and frustration. It's, it's pretty much a universal among humans. So the complete avoidance of acknowledging that that is a normal, natural thing that we can learn from means that those people basically are not willing to learn from their own mistakes and they don't want you to learn from yours either. That's pretty toxic. And then on the other side, when they're just nasty and pretty open about it, uh, they're basically saying a very similar story, don't you think? Except the only difference is that, you know, they're not trying to cover up their mistakes with a bunch of sunshine dust. It's basically like, I suck, you suck, we all suck. 
You're inferior, though. I'm better than you. <laughs> I think both of these things are actually driven by a lot of negativity, a lot of negative self-talk, a lot of hypercritical judgmental nonsense and insecurity. And I think if we could just shed some sunlight on it and try to figure out more constructive ways of communicating with each other, that stuff could just kind of go away. And we could just talk and be real and not be abusive and not be completely fraudulent <laughs> about what we're actually feeling and experiencing in the world. So I wanted to thank you guys for watching. I look forward to your comments. Thank you to everybody who hangs out with me on Patreon. They get a lot of behind the scenes stuff and I want to try to actually make more of that kind of content that's kind of like behind the scenes of the wig industry, like more about my personal life. So you guys can get to know me and get to know more about my business. Not in a way where it's like an imposition, I would hope, but in a way that, you know, is fascinating and helps you kind of learn uh, about what I'm up against as a small retailer in such a crowded space. Um, if that kind of thing is interesting to you, please check out our Patreon. Um, and uh, until next time, I look forward to your comments. If I get enough of them and they're juicy topics in and of themselves, we may do a follow-up. We could even make this a series. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to continuing this discussion in the comments. Bye, everybody. Thank you.